This is part one of a three-part series with John White and Jason Himmelstein, showing you how to create SQL Azure databases, then using the new Microsoft Flow, and finally using Power BI to do visualization on Twitter Analytics. Hi, John. Hello there, sir. How are you? I'm awesome. So what we're going to do right now is something that uh, kind of is baffling to some people, but uh, to some people it's just old hat. Um, and that's, we're going to create our first SQL Azure database in order to do this really cool stuff that we're going to play with with Twitter analytics. Um, so there, there are a couple of steps here. Uh, I've already created a SQL server, so we're going to leave that alone. Uh, but we're going to come in here and we want to create a new uh, SQL Azure database. Um, so simply come in and I'm going to click on the new button. And uh, you can come in here and say, you know, I want to create a new it should be data and storage. And I just want to create a new SQL database. So that's, the, that's one way we can do it. Um, there are other ways you could do it. I could have gone into the SQL, tab, SQL databases tab uh, and gone from there, but not everybody has that pinned. So uh, in this particular situation, I'm going to go ahead and create a name for this, and I'm just going to call it Twitter because we are going to play with uh, Microsoft's new toy, Microsoft Flow. We're going to pull in some Twitter data. Um, so I'm going to call it Twitter, and I already have a resource group. I've already got a SQL Server created and it found it. Uh, so I'm going to use that. If you didn't have that, then, well, you can go off and create. Uh, but I'm going to start from a blank database. And with the standard pricing tier, we're just going to play with the low end here. And at the end, once it's created, I want to pin it to the dashboard. Straightforward, simple, easy. Boom, click create, and I'm, it's going to go off and create. Uh, once this is finished, I'm going to go in and do a couple of other things. But while this is playing, I'm going to come in here into my SQL databases. And just for the, in the interest of time uh, to show that we're not playing sleight of hand at all, I'm going to come into this particular database in order to get to some other pieces uh, that I need to make sure I've done. Uh, we're going to use Management Studio, John, uh, in order to mm -hmm. actually create our database. Um, so in order to make this work, I need to make sure that I can log into this particular guy here. Um, so I'll go ahead and type that in. And what yep. it's going to want to do is, it, first of all, it's going to want to sign me into Microsoft Azure. So I need to go ahead and do that very quickly. Um, it's going to pop up a sign-in box. And I'm going to tell it my account name, horn.com. And this is actually, you know, I have my Office 365 account, but this is using it in my personal account as opposed to my Office 365 account because this is my uh, subscription through my MVP and all of that for uh, SQL. So I'm going to create uh, that. So I'm going to log in here and type my password. Say OK. That's going to log me in. And there we go. Now I'm signed in as Jason at SharePointLonghorn.com. And it needs to add a firewall rule. Um, so just uh, for transparency, what is that talking about? Well, I come in here. I click on my particular database that already exists. Um, just for grins, I'll uh, make sure that my new database is not ready yet. I, I, uh, and I, it is. I, think, I think it's worth pointing out, too, that that management studio prompt you got, I think that's 2016 only. Yeah, I think uh, it is. It's the the others will just fail. Yeah. <laughs> you have to figure this out for yourself. So um, in this particular situation, though, I can come in here to my new database called Twitter. You saw it get created. There's nothing fancy to this. There are no tables or anything. So I'll come in here, click on the server name. And that's the, another important thing, because you're creating a firewall rule on the server, not the database. That is correct. So I need to click on the server name, and now I'm going to show my firewall settings. Um, in this particular situation, it's going to show me the blade for settings, and then it's going to flick over and show me my firewall rules. So it's still deploying some things and telling me things are successful. So you'll see there are no rules configured. Now, if I come back to my 2016 prompt, prompt, I can click add my client IP and click OK, and it's going to give me an error. So they haven't quite finished baking all of the 2016 stuff. So I want to show that <laughs> off hopefully when 2016 actually launches, because this, I believe, is uh, uh, CTP 3.2's version of uh, Management Studio. Uh, hopefully this all works, but for right now, it's still a little wonky. So what I can do here is come back over to, to Azure and click on Add Client IP. Now, this is really nice because <laughs> when I first started playing with Azure, I don't know about you, John, this was a pain in the butt. Now yes, I simply it was. click one time, <laughs> I click Add Client IP, and there it is. Um, now, I'm going to rename this so, because right now it's using uh, a client IP and a date. 
string. If you take a look at the end of this, it's giving it that. I'm just going to call this JSON Home. Gives me my green checkboxes across the board. I'm going to say Save, and it's updating my, ser my uh, server firewall rules. It's going to set that, and then I will actually be able to, once it says OK, come back over here, and I can click Connect. And lo and behold, now I can connect with Management Studio. You'll notice uh, right here, see the little blue icon, the blue database icon? That's letting me know I'm connecting to a SQL Azure database as opposed to connecting to a SQL on-prem database. Uh, just one of the little visual cues for you. And if I click into databases, here is my Twitter database. Um, and here are the tables. You'll find that they are completely blank. Now, John, you had a script for me. Uh, so we could create the table that we want here. Yep. I'm just going to drag that in, and uh, here we are. So this is going to create the table called Twitter, and it's just going to create uh, a couple of columns that we need inside of it, and then it's going to alter the table to add a primary key. Yeah, so, those are the those are the fields that get returned essentially in flow from uh, the Twitter action. It kicks back the tweeted by, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, you want to have those in your database so you can populate them. And even though I, uh, I trust John with my life, I still am going to read his SQL code and uh, make sure that I, before I execute, I'm comfortable with everything. Uh, you absolutely should. <laughs> I execute. So make sure you always do that. Uh, I could parse it, but I know it's going to work. So I'm just going to click on execute. And there we go. It's created successfully. I'll come back over to tables. And there we go. I now have dbo.twitter. And I have uh, everything I'm looking for. Uh, I can select the top 1,000 rows. Of course, there are no rows in the database at this point. But when it returns, it's going to show me that those are all the columns that exist. It's going to show me across the top. Here I have everything that I'm looking for. So that's Absolutely. how I go off and create the database, create the tables that I'm looking for. So I have everything I'm, that I need. And now we can move on to step number two.